The fact that virtual reality is even a thing is pretty incredible. It seemed like nothing but a pipe dream at the turn of the millennium, but now it's an up-and-coming sector with plenty of competition. There are so many companies trying to one-up each other that it's a total dogfight, which is good news for us VR enthusiasts. With plenty of impressive pieces of VR tech out there from suits to gloves to boots and heck, even treadmills, there's a lot of options. But do they actually make us feel like we're in the game? That's right, although it feels like virtual reality has been around forever, it's still technically an up-and-coming sector that has hit a little bit of a roadblock recently. Sure, interest in VR has really spiked up recently because more people are at home and bored than ever before. So they're looking for literally anything to do. But the industry itself has remained a bit static. This could be mainly due to our current global situation, but could also be because of the industry's high prices and the fact that there won't be a new PSVR in the immediate future. Most VR gamers are also console gamers. So any rumors of a new PSVR 2 headset compatible with the PlayStation 5 are a big deal for the industry. But just because nothing of interest has been released for a while doesn't mean that VR is dying. If anything, it's the complete opposite. Plenty of different companies are starting to push the boundaries and innovate a little bit with suits, gloves, boots, and even treadmills that are supposed to really immerse you in the games. But are these gadgets actually effective at it? Speaking of innovation, I just have to talk about the full-body Tesla suit and the Tesla suit gloves. If you haven't seen the full-body Tesla suit yet, it's absolutely insane. Sure, it may cost around 13 grand to get a dev kit, so it definitely ain't cheap, but the features it gives VR users are incredible. Oh, by the way, the $13,000 price is probably not going to be how much it'll cost consumers. It'll most likely cost around $1,500 to $3,000, bucks, depending on which version you get. You'd swear Tesla suit is owned by Tesla themselves for that price, but there's actually no affiliation. Enough about the pricing though, let's talk about what this bad boy is capable of. The Tesla suit does more than your typical VR suits that usually just give haptic feedback and that's about it. The suit can track your vitals and even mildly electrocute you so you actually feel what's going on in game. It sounds painful, but don't worry. You can set the level of electrostimulation from a gentle tickle to an actual jolt. That sounds pretty great and works well to imitate pain and danger, but it's not perfect. For example, getting electro-stimulated while trying to just force close a set of double doors doesn't make much sense as a substitute for physical exertion. Your muscles won't shock you when you exert yourself, so it's not quite accurate there. But a tightening feeling could be quite scary to experience, so I personally think they did the right thing. Now, let's talk about those gloves. The Tesla suit gloves are designed to let you feel virtual objects, experience haptic feedback, and track your pulse for a whopping $5,000. Yep, the gloves are probably more expensive than the actual suit because of all that advanced tech. It ain't cheap to be able to feel virtual objects. The full-body Tesla suit and gloves really change the VR game, but they don't solve one of VR's biggest issues, movement. While the suit and gloves do a great job of immersing you in VR, the Ecto-1 boots are designed to keep you in one spot as you move forward. At the bottom of each boot is a rotating plate that can twist to the direction you're walking in. It makes you feel like you're walking forward, but you're actually staying in the same spot the entire time. While these Ecto-1 boots are sick, there's one catch. They don't support running yet since, well, running involves having both feet off the ground at times. There's no official price just yet, but I expect it to cost upwards of $1,000. If running in VR is very important to you, then you can invest in the Virtuix Omni One treadmill. You'll be able to walk, run, kneel, and even jump on this treadmill freely while having 360 degree movement. It will do a good job of solving the locomotion problem VR has always had, but it will come at a steep price of 2,000 bucks. Clearly, virtual reality is evolving, which it desperately needs to stay relevant. While the full-body Tesla suit and gloves do an incredible job of making us actually feel like we're in a VR game, it still has a ways to go before it becomes more accessible to VR gamers. For starters, the price of Tesla suit's gadgets are ridiculously high. Yes, most people who are invested in virtual reality have the money to buy all of these gadgets. But until the price comes down significantly, many consumers will be hard-pressed to spend their hard-earned cash on this VR tech. It's just not consumer-friendly at this current moment. But I'm not just talking about Tesla suit. Even the Ecto-1 boots and the Virtuix Omni-1 treadmill I talked about have their problems. And it all has to do with cost, not immersion. 
They do a great job of making you feel like you're actually in the game, you just have to pay up to truly experience that feeling. Prices aside, the future of VR does look incredible. With all this interest, innovation, and the focus of the industry moving forward being immersion, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Just please make things more affordable so VR doesn't become solely a wealthy man's game. As awesome as it would be to own a dope full-body suit, a fancy glove, some nice boots, and a crazy futuristic treadmill, I would have needed to make my money out of GameStop two weeks ago to afford it all. Something I didn't do. Thanks, Reddit.